Welcome to Flames of Revival broadcast. This is Shelby Varner. So glad you tuned in again today. I uh, thank God that uh, he watches over his word to make it good. He's a good God all of the time. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to try to calm down this time. Uh, I get excited because I remember how many people God has helped. And I remember the time when God helped me. Got it? And to me, it's kind of like David. You know, when David went into battle, he told Goliath, he said, oh, I kill a lion and I kill a bear. So he, he remembered the victories that God had given him. And so I think that going in to help you get rid of and keep out of you a double mind, remember what the Lord has done for you. Remember when you didn't qualify for the job, but they gave it to you anyway. Remember when the doctor said you wasn't going to live, but you live. Remember when the doctor said your child wasn't going to live and your baby lived. You understand what I'm saying? See, because the whole world, the whole earth, the whole world, the whole earth, the whole world is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. That's us. Okay. And the world want to know, does this stuff work? I mean, is it working for anybody? You know, we could all get together and talk. Is anybody getting healed? You know, any of the gifts of the spirit operating? Is, is anybody anointed? You know, what was going on? Because, see, they judge it by results. And so I think that instead of playing with this thing, I think that we need to be fast and pray and seek in the face of God and, 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 and get some success under our belt. And then people will believe you. You understand what I'm saying? They believe you. Okay. Uh, because God will use you, but, it, but you have to want it, you know. And you can't compare yourself with other people and all of that. You don't have time for that, okay, because you got a calling on your life, okay. And so, so, so you need to be single-minded about the things that God has put in you. So I've been talking about how to overcome uh, the double mind and, and how to win against the double mind. So um, I want to teach you some basics from the Scripture so you will have something to stand on and it'll help your thought process when it comes to uh, approaching the promises of God, standing on the word of God and looking for God to move in your situation. Plus, it'll give you some info on how to help somebody else. Because, see, you need to be able to teach this. You need to be able to talk to people. They need to learn and know and understand that God is watching over this word to make it good. It's not a man that can't nobody heal but God. You understand? But God gave me power. So I'm acting on his behalf. So if he said I got power to cast out devils, I got power to cast out devils because that's what he said. And so if you start basing all your spiritual action on a real spiritual authority who is God, you know what I mean? The Holy Spirit. If you start doing that, then you'll find out that it'll take all the struggle out of you. You won't be struggling to stand on this. See, you struggle when you don't understand. Glory to God. Wow. You struggle when you don't understand. You heard what I said? You struggle <clears throat> when you don't understand. Okay? You understand what I just said? That's when you struggle, when you don't understand. Okay. So now... <clears throat> Romans uh, 12 and 2, okay, Romans 12, uh, verse 2, uh, it says, be not conformed, you know what it says, you know, it says, be not con I beseech you therefore, bro verse 1, I beseech you, uh, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, you present your bodies, so that's you, my spirit man, present your bodies. Under God, a uh, living sacrifice, under God, living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, to God, which is your reasonable service. So you don't get no brownie points for living right, for living clean, for having a clean mind and clean thoughts. You know what? It's just right to do right. You feel good. It's just, uh, you know, and I know anybody perfect, but y'all understand what I'm saying. A hypocrite, they don't feel good. You know, they put on, they really don't feel good. And the thing about a hypocrite is, a hypocrite know they're a hypocrite. You understand? A person that's playing the game, they know they're playing the game. Got it? And a person that's not playing the game, they know they're not playing the game. And so you have to live with your own conscience. Okay? So it says, and do not be conformed to the world. Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good 
and acceptable and perfect will of God. So you, you, you can't be like the world. All right. Now, in fact, uh, what is it? 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You already know. The Bible says if any man is in Christ, right? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Watch this. He's a new creation. So let, let me just add some stuff. Um, the Bible says the man thinketh his heart, so is he. So, so I'm going to just say some stuff and just listen to what I'm saying. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All right. He's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, so, and I understand about, you know, um, you know, family curses and all that stuff that can come up in the family and the bloodline and all that. But maybe you ought to have a new thought about it. If any man is in Christ, he's brand new. So if he's brand new, then he's something that didn't exist before. So if he didn't exist before, then that means there shouldn't be anything attached to him. And if it is, it is illegal. All right. And so you need to understand that God is a legalist. And into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Do you understand? See, and so, so God, God does everything according to his word. You know why, you know why the devil didn't come and stop Adam and Eve from eating fruit? You know why? Because God is a legalist. They had the right. You know why Jesus didn't make that man on the cross that died next to him? You know, one of them got saved, the other one didn't. You know why Jesus didn't force that other one to get saved? Because he couldn't. Because he's a legalist. Do you understand why God didn't tell that angel. Now, I know Lot's wife going to try to look back. I want you to grab that head and just hold it straight because if she looked back, a curse going to fall on her. How come God just let her turn, let her do what she wanted to do? You know why? Because God is a legalist. Got it? Do you understand? The, the, God gave the earth to men. He gave the earth to men. Got it? And so the only way he could come is with your permission and your participation. So once you start understanding that, it ain't God holding back. It's my level of understanding. Yeah, I want to talk to you. It's my level of understanding that's blocking me from being able to receive. All right. Okay. Now, uh, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, right? And hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. So your faith will come as you hear what God has to say. Watch this. Ephesians 3, uh, verse 20, it says, now watch, watch this now. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above, all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. So God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above everything that we can ask or think according to the power. All right, now watch this. So when he's talking about the power that works in us, he's talking about the power of the Spirit of God and the freedom that we give him to give us revelation. You got it? The Holy Ghost wants to give you revelation about stuff that you don't know nothing about. And most time, we just look around at the preachers who've been and whatever, and we say, I ain't never heard that before, and, then, and that ain't nobody, and I ain't never heard that. And God, could, God got a million things he can tell, a billion things he can tell you. You understand? You understand what I'm saying? If you think... The preachers nowadays got all the revelation. You, you, you don't understand. And God can give you a revelation and you don't have to be no preacher. Got it? And so, 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 so what I want to do is jar your thinking so you won't be double minded. So one of the first things I want you to get, start getting into as far as how the mechanics of this thing work is start saying it's possible. You know, I ain't never went through that, but you know, I'm going to be all right. Is it possible for you to be all right? Well, then it's possible and you're going to be all right. You know? You know what I mean? 
Well, they hiring over there, but I don't, ain't never hired nobody like me. It's possible for you to get that job. You understand? I ain't never built no building before. It's possible for you to build. See, so you get, so get rid of impossible and start getting possible in. And then don't look around and try to act like everybody else. Got it? You understand? Y'all understand what I'm saying? And so God is trying to bring you into something new and stronger and different. That's why it's so exciting to me to spend time with God and spend time in his word. It excites me. You got it? Because God can take just these words and speak some stuff and ooh-wee. Now, now watch this. Watch this. Okay, Lord. Remember I told you that when I got healed and I started talking? All right, so watch this. And you've heard this before, I'm sure, but I'm going to say it. The promises of God are voice activated. The promise of God are voice activated. You have what you say. You have what you say. Okay, Google. Got it? Then it starts to activate. You carry it around all you want. You have it in your pocket. You can have it wherever. But it's amazing, you know, and then some now you talk to them and they send a text. <laughs> or you tell them, call John. You're talking. But it, it don't activate numbers, dial, and connection until you talk. If a man got the ability to put that kind of technology in the phone and God made the law and the man, well, then I think that God can tell you to say to the mountain or call things to be not or put yourself in a position of power and authority, or create a job with your words, or create, you understand what I'm saying? I ain't never wrote no movie before. Write one! Yeah, you can write a movie. No big deal. You understand? See, see, here's the deal. You got to stay in your calling. Because when you start talking stuff, like, like what I'm talking, I've had some of my cousins, you know, people, well, Rev, you say all that stuff. Well, how much, how, why don't you do it? God didn't tell me to do everything. I don't want to do everything. I don't want to. And I can't. <laughs> That's so simple. That ain't even hard. I don't want to do everything. I don't want to build no building and coach a football team. Y'all understand? And coach ice hockey and, 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 and race horses. And you can't do but so much stuff. So you need to do what your calling is and do what you like. Okay, y'all getting this? And so what I want you to start doing is dream big, possibilities. Nothing is impossible to the one that believes. You got it? You understand what I'm saying? My son-in-law right now, some of you know it, some of you don't. When he was telling me, I didn't have a clue. When he was telling me that he was going to be a cook, you know, because he's, you know, when he, you know, I kind of raised him a little bit. You understand, when he was 13 or 14, he started hanging around. And so he said, oh, I think, you know, so I said, well, you need to find out what God wants you to do because that's your calling. I said, your calling is different from my calling. And so I'm going over stuff, and, and he just, just bold. I know what I want to do. I said, what's that? He said, I want to be a chef. Now, you got to understand, I'm looking at this boy like, oh, okay. I said, well, Lord, I guess he didn't understand what I said because <laughs> he's definite about that. I'm going to be a chef. I mean, the real chef, like the ones you see on TV. You know, so I said, okay. So I didn't push him, didn't, you know, just watched him. You understand? My boy said, I'm going to be a photographer. Got it? You know, so I was buying him a little cameras when he was a little boy and throwing them to him. But I didn't know that's what I was doing. I forgot about it. He was telling me about it. But anyway, uh, today he's a professional photographer. That's what he does. All right. But let me go back to my son-in-law. <laughs> He, he, he kept saying that, and then all of a sudden he came and told me, he said, Daddy, because that's what he called me, you know, Daddy, you know what? He said, I'm going to school. I said, you going to school for what? I'm going to school to be a chef. Oh, no, I got faith. I'm going to be a chef. The program is two years, da 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 I said, okay. He said, oh, yeah, I'm going to be a chef. Um, and he just kept saying it, and, then I, and I believed him anyway. But then I really started watching him, and I started believing what he said. Got it? You understand? Now watch this. He's going to be finished with his class, uh, and I'm just telling you because I'm trying to show you something. Okay, because this happened whether you know it or not. I'm just, you know, judge by results. I, I teach them the same thing. Judge by results. If I ain't getting no result, they ain't getting no result. Something wrong. It ain't no way you keep obeying God and the promises don't start coming to pass. 
And not God. God watched over his word to make it good. God can't lie. Delight yourself in the Lord. He gives you the desire of your heart. So that's what he meant. Got it? So, so, so he said, yeah, and I, it's going to be two-year program, so and so and so. I said, okay. And then he started going to school. Then I went to his school to see what he did. You understand? After about a year, after uh, about a year, year and a half. So in July, he'll be done. Now watch this, though. See, this is the deal. He said, oh, yeah, I'm going to be a chef. And so then God started moving. Now watch this now. Understand. Now, I don't know how many chefs in Houston. I don't know. But anyway, he worked the Super Bowl <laughs> as a chef. I don't, I don't, don't ask me. Because he wanted to. Then he worked the shell open. Because he believed God would open the door. Then he worked the Houston open. <laughs> and the day while his tape was being made, he worked at River Oaks. The tennis club in River Oaks. Today, he's at work right now. <laughs> but it started out with him believing that I could be a chef and then God let him bypass a whole lot of folks. And those are some of the biggest venues in the state of Texas that he's worked at. And he said, oh, that ain't nothing. That's what we do. <laughs> okay, so he believed he could. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to tell you. And he did. Okay, so, but faith without works is dead. So he had to get rid of that other mind. He didn't, he didn't think about nothing else. He didn't want to, he tall, he real tall. He didn't want to be no basketball player. He didn't want to do none of that. He didn't want to do none of that. He said, nope, I want to cook. So you couldn't get him on nothing else. He kept coming back to cook. So he's single-minded. And now that's what he is. Okay, so I had to use an example so you'll understand that you could have what you say. You could, see, see, now, now watch this. People say, well, I don't, well, first of all, pray and ask God what he wants you to do or become a hat, whatever. Okay, that's first. And then secondly, one guy said, well, God ain't said nothing to me. I said, okay, well, if God don't say nothing, you go on with your own mind. He gave you a mind. So if he hadn't said nothing specifically for you to do, go with your own mind until he says something specific for you to do. I said, but until then, you know what I mean? Un until he showed you something, then go on with your mind. I said, God made your mind. He know how to change it. Do you understand? But if you don't do nothing, then ain't nothing, nothing from nothing is going to leave nothing. You understand that? Okay. So, uh, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly, and that's why I use that. Exceedingly abundantly above everything you can ask or think according to the power of that works on the inside of you. Now, 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 there's a scripture. I don't know if you ever heard of it or not. In Isaiah, all right, Isaiah <laughs> 42 and 9. See, now I'm giving you word now. I'm giving you, you something to stand on, something you can, you can plan, something you can connect to, something you can look at. He that looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and he's not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work that man is blessed in all his deeds that's what God said and so you need to believe that God cannot lie and God cannot fail I don't care what has happened in the past whatever you just got to believe that God can't lie and he will never ever fail you just got to believe that okay now watch this Isaiah 42 verse 9 Isaiah 42 verse 9 Behold, the former things have come to pass. In other words, whatever is already is. He said, and new things I declare before they spring forth, I tell you of them. What? So God said, whatever already happened, whatever's already been, it already is. He said, but then I also got some new things I want to tell you. And then so, so, so and what he's trying to say is, what already done, that's what I told you was going to happen. I made the world where people can create. So you already see that. He said, and so now if I tell you something new or different or tell you something I want you to do, you know, like build a building or whatever he tell you, he said, well, I'm going to declare it and then I'm going to be the doer of the thing. So what God is saying is don't fight him. Don't, don't fight his create. Don't fight his ability to put some, 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 some thoughts in you that you ain't never had before. 
He said, I declare it. And some people, you got this stuff popped up in your spirit. You got stuff right now. You understand? I heard a woman's testimony, and I think I heard this one in person. She was talking, and she was on welfare, and she got saved. You understand? She got saved. And so she, the preacher said, see what you got in your house and do something. So somebody had gave her a box of little girl socks from, from, from Goodwill and, and lace. So she decided, I need a little money. So she started sewing the little frizzle little thing on the little girl's socks and selling them in, in the complex. It just so happened that the day when she was doing this, the social worker came by and asked her what she was doing. She told her, and she told her, she said, well, look, why don't you enroll in the GED class, and then if you pass, I'll get you to manage this whole complex. She passed, she started managing the complex, and she kept on working her business, and she's a millionaire, and she lives in the woodlands now, unless she died lately. But how did she start? She believed that with socks, she believed that something she had, God could use if she took it by faith and worked on it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And if a whole lot of people got stories just like that, I don't want to go over the stories because I'm not preaching the story. I'm preaching the power of God. I'm, I'm preaching God's ability to do anything. You could be a producer. You could do, you could do whatever you want to do, but you got to first find out what it is you're supposed to do. And if God don't change that, then you go about doing that. And if God wants you to do something else, he's going to tell you himself. Because, see, a lot of time we let our environment decide what we can become. And God got some plans for you. I mean, bigger than you can imagine. Do you hear what I'm saying? See, one of the things I'm working on, see, I see me preaching all over the world. You understand what I'm saying? I see it. I see it. And I have on the, on the other TV broadcasts I used to be on a long time ago. You understand? But I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about, I'm talking about a whole bunch of other stuff. You understand? And look like, look like things are opening up. I'm telling you right now. See, see, now, see, it, it, you, you, you have what you say. You have what you believe. And then I expect miracle signs and wonders to take place. I, I expect God to tell me people's names and, and tell me what's wrong with them. He's been doing that. <laughs> I can't even tell you. See, there's a lot of stuff I don't, I don't want to say nothing about because I don't want you to think I'm talking about me. I'm talking about the principle of this word that makes stuff work. So watch this. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. So my having can get activated by my voice. Say to the mountain, be thou removed. You know, God said, call things to be not. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. See, so, so my freedom and my deliverance get activated when I start talking. Okay, now watch this. The whole universe has been activated by a voice. The whole world has been activated by a voice. Voice. God said, and God said, and God said, and God said, and God said. God who is a spirit activated the whole everything. Let the earth bring forth. Let the seasons, let, let, let the seas be filled. You understand what I'm saying? He commanded ravens to feed thee there. God activates stuff. Donkey, you need to go talk because my prophet over there losing his mind. And the donkey talk. Why? Because he got activated because God spoke. Do you understand? So God, who you're in partnership with, wants to speak a blessing on you. And he wants you to, how can two walk together except they agree? So when you start saying what God says, you activate the, your own blessing that's going to come in you. You have what you say. Do you understand what I'm saying? You start thanking God for doors opening. Thank God that you got to know more than enough. Thank God you can manage money. See, I know some people that couldn't manage money and they start praying. Now they can manage it. But when they started, they couldn't manage no money. It, 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 it shook them up. Do you understand what I'm saying? See, so I want the real you to please come out. Stand up. Don't be holding back. Don't try to be like everybody. Don't try to stay what you, where you've been and stay what you've been. Got it? You understand? Let the word of God work on the inside of you. Okay, now watch this. Watch this. Here's what happens. Now, I wrote, I wrote myself a note. Here's what happens. When you start saying what God said and declaring, declaring out loud what's going to happen, then you create an atmosphere. And out of that atmosphere comes manifestation. You hear what I said? You create an atmosphere, and out of that atmosphere comes manifestation. Do you understand what I'm saying? At a, well, I don't even want to tell you about that. That just happened. Was, you know, God was, I ran into this guy. 
And, and I was saying some stuff, and he said, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I said, okay, it's going to happen. Go on, take you two weeks off. And I don't care if you're 80 years old. God got a plan. You understand? And God opened open up a door. I said, and you're not ready to go to heaven yet because you can help people and all. And so he believed me. And then he said, well, I'm going to be here two days. If gonna leave me. I didn't know none of that. And then when I went back, he was just getting ready to go right then. Two days later, he said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do just what you said. He started crying while he was talking to me. This just happened. This just happened. This just happened last week. He said, I, I started, he, he, 82, white guy. Got it? And uh, I mean, 80. And he was at the door, you know, at the greeters at, at one of the Walmarts. And that's what he was saying. He said, you know what? I'm going to do just what you said. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take these two weeks off. And then I'm going back to work. He said, and guess what? I said, what's that? He said, I already called somebody, and I told him I'm 80, and I told him I'm on a cane, and I asked him, did that matter? And they said, no. So what he was telling me was, he said, so what he was telling me was, I'm going to take off, and when I come back, I got the job. But see, he was about to give up. He ready to die. You understand? And I said, God, let me speak to somebody today and help them. Got it? I don't even remember I went in the Walmart for, but whatever it was, he was at the door. And then... So when I left the last time, I said, well, I know I won't see you no more. He said, yeah, you'll see me when I get to heaven. I said, okay. He said, but I'm going to take them days off, and I'm going to go back to work, and I'm going to do just what you said. And he was crying. And the other lady was standing there waiting to relieve him. He said, and I sure appreciate you, my brother, doing what the Lord told you to do because it's changing my whole life. And his smile was that big. And I said, thank you, Jesus. And I got in the car and drove off. Do you understand? See, see if you want to be a vessel, God will use you. You, you. You, you, you understand? Now, now watch this. You can, power can be activated. If you, if you got a gift of healing and, and you believe it's, it, you, you call to do that, God can activate it. And you can activate stuff. Now, now I'm going to tell you, let me, I didn't know I was going to say this, but let me tell you one of the things that you can do. One of the things you can do is when you go around people, you ask God to start showing you stuff, showing you conditions, show you what's wrong. Lord, let me pray for somebody. Give me a word for somebody. Let me, let me see something wrong in somebody's back. And you will see a sister, and they, they don't look like it, but you say, ma'am, do you have any pain in your back? Oh, yes, Lord, how did you know? See, and then God is training you to hear his voice. Because a lot of you, you want to hear God's voice, and see, you think you're going to practice in church. Well, church ain't the place to practice. The harvest is in the field. Unless your pastor tell you that. But the harvest is in the field. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so, since the harvest is in the field, then you practice in the field. But, uh, and the Bible says your spiritual senses will be at, uh, will come alive by use in, in, in uh, Hebrews. And so your pastor needs you to be anointed. You know, he know how to run the church. He needs some people going out there and get some sheep. He, he know what to do inside. You understand what I'm saying? But you can do this. If all the believers who could do it will start doing it, you would be amazed at what our father will do. Okay, I'm out of time. It's been wonderful. God bless you. This is Shelby Varner from Anahuac, Texas. Remember, you got what it takes. It takes what you've got to change this whole world. God bless you. I'm going to see you next time on the air.